Welcome back to Inside X, episode number six, brought to you guys by Parts Canada. And uh, I've been at the track lately wearing my Thor gear, Alpine Star boots, Alpine Star helmet. Thing, the stuff works and fits amazing. So uh, check those guys out. Any Parts Canada dealer, and there's many of them across the great country of Canada there. Uh, today's episode, we're going to hit up another Arma Rewind. We know how uh, Galdi loves those. And we're in RJ's 2004, so an Ontario race in Barrie there. And uh, actually, I raced this event. I don't think you see me in the Arma Rewind, but I was there. And uh, it was a great event there of the CMRC days. On to the social media. That's going to be brought to you guys by Gas Gas Canada. Obviously, a new brand to Canada, a new brand to the world. KTM bought those guys out, and they're bringing those things back. And, man, we've been fortunate enough to test one of those things, and they've been running great. Um, another segment today, and I know you guys have been waiting for this one. And it's a Rude's Garage. He's got those M7 graphics and that gut seat. He's going to install those today, and this thing is looking mint. I got a sneak peek of it. And, man, you guys are going to be excited to see this. And the thing is almost ready to go to the track and ride. And last but not least, we have a great interview coming your way. Ryder McNabb came in the studio. And uh, the young 15-year-old on his rookie season coming up, we're going to see where he came from, a Manitoba native. And he's going to come in here and talk about how his short pro career has gone so far. And uh, what a kid, great uh, young rider, and maybe an up-and-coming Colton Fasciati in the future. But uh, that is the show for today. Before I get Galdi in here, we're going to take a quick commercial break. Inside X, I got my guy Galdi in the studio here, and we're on episode six, Galdi, and moving right along. I know we're going to jump right into this Arma section uh, right away, but I get uh, warm when you talk about it. I get oh, like feel. We love the rewind up. and the Arma products trying to get into Canada. We talked about this before the show. They're trying to get this stuff into Canada. There's a lot of uh, things you got to do to get into Canada, but uh, man. I, well, we were kind of talking, you got to be uh, bilingual as far as all the labeling yep. goes, right, with Quebec. So that's probably a, a, a big hoop to jump through. And then I'm, I'm sure with all the guidelines and sort of the stuff that goes in each product, right, you, certain yep. things you got to, you know, sign off on and stuff like that. So yep. we know that uh, it's flying off the shelves in the States and they can't keep it stocked up. And we're, we're waiting on a shipment too, because I want to jump on this stuff. I want to, I want to, I've had it. some Arma Blitz. Oh, no, I've way. had the Arma Blitz. It's like a, a rehydration yep. drink. And I had it before I won the uh, Vet National at Glen Helen a couple years ago. And I'd say that probably was the key. Wow. Might've that's been the, the whole marketing. Might have uh, been the other beverage. That's too, their big that marketing point there. <laughs> the, the Arma Blitz, I know, is good stuff. So I can't wait to see the rest of the stuff. Yeah. So those guys, uh, obviously, this section presented by Arma. And mm -hmm. uh, this is our favorite section of the show, the Arma Rewind. We're going back to 2004. It's the only reason you bring me in here, I think, isn't it? Buddy. <laughs> it's because you're littered in the show. Literally every episode, I, I pre watch them and like, oh, well, there's Galdi again. He's oh. on the mic this time. Okay. He's Does your head for... drop down? Okay. Oh. He's on the ground this time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's either it's either winning or you're crashing or you're on the mic. You know what I mean? Those three little things. You I like it. pick. Good, good. So RJ's 2004. And, good year. Uh, yeah, good, good year. Track. We're gonna, we're gonna good track. Good year. Those, we're going to roll those clips here, Galdi, but that was a big year for the 250 class. I love the start of this right there. Peter Rammer, 57, kicking his bike, and then the gate drops. The gate drops. That's the way to start the armor. That bike got a shot of armor in Get the motor up. right there. Yeah. And uh, this was a weird year, too, as far as bike stuff going. Donnie McGordy getting the whole shot. Remember, Suzuki and Cowie shared... A 250F this yeah. year. And um, at this round two, the biggest entry list ever in the history of our sport for the 250 class, 93, right? I think it was yeah. 93 riders. 93. There was three um, qualifiers. Oh, there I am right there on the number 30 pass and of Kevin Gregoire. All, See you later, Gregoire. All those four strokes. You went back to the two stroke. Yeah, KTM. I was a factory KTM guy that yep. year, and they hadn't made a 250F until 2005. And uh, that bike, although I'll tell you what, that bike was amazing. Like, it yeah. was so good. And it was one of the SXFs. So it came with, like, all these trick parts and trick little extra things to it and stuff like that. There's the new right there, Ryan Locker, Kevin Gray. There's my boy Mesley. We're going to see some cool stuff with him, I'm sure, in here. And um, 
Lots of good stuff here. There's Gavin Grasick on one of those 2004. And this is the first year that we saw Grasick coming yeah, up kind of right here. And he would kind of become uh, a bit of a, st a stature in our series for a while. Yeah, after he this. became kind of full time after. And he's passing. Is that the Lusk or Parabinos? Uh, Parabinos. Is that Parabinos right there? Gentlemen. So Paul Parabinos and uh, Shane Lusk were filling rides for uh, Derek Fisher and Turbo Reef, who got uh, Turbo Reef, who got hurt before the season. And they did not do very good and got fired after this race. Oh, <laughs> they got that, fired. That's a tough go. But there, Mez on screen now. And, man, he jumped around. And there's Dougie D, who was yeah. a, a good threat here. He's getting passed by Grasic. He's um, on the Blair Morgan Yamaha yeah. switch from Diablo. Yes, he did. Right? He no, sorry. Right. Wait. A year before this was 03. 03. So, yes, it was Diablo. Yeah, yep, 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 it was Diablo. So he's out there on that Yamaha. He rode well. Look at the Mez. Here. Oh. oh, just to ting, ting, ting on the one, two, five, putting guys into the curb. Oh, here comes Noof too. He doesn't want a piece of it though. Yeah, he's so back these guys down. battled this whole moto. It seemed like, and and Mez passed Noof early on. But look at that. And it's not like ever you see I footage know. where Mezley gets passed on a jump, and it happens to be Ryan Lockhart, that who was never was really a jumper. Big that day. I rode that track, and one of my better results. I think I was like eight in one of the motos and man that jump right there i, I only did it like half the time try doing running. it on a 125 <laughs> oh, no, i was on a 2 but yeah but it was really rutted coming out the face look at this pass oh, that's for the lead right there remember yep. uh mcgrudy had clutch problems he went that's like 12-1 right. on this day or something that's like right. that he does I mean. end up winning the championship this year and there's all oh, there's lockhart picking it down he actually has a he broke his leg two weeks before this yep. uh and still rode i can't remember if it was tib or fib but something on the bottom was like uh and toughed it out there so that was kind of cool again we saw the 03 mission, now 04. The heart of Noof started getting built after that uh, that bike problem there in 03. Look at that, Grace. And Dougie D was right behind him, actually, yeah, right there. Look at that. Not too bad. And that's a, that was up. a good series for Dougie. I know he ran into some issues later on, but a good series that year in 04 for him in that 250 class. On to the 450 class here. And that start, very, uh, very big start, Talladega style. There you go. Not very often you saw crashes in this start. Nice and no. wide, very friendly. Look at the 450s everywhere. Rob McCullough says, get out of my way, Mitch Cook. <laughs> and this is the year that Mitch Cook really turned his career around. Got on that four, Honda 450, which just was a magical machine. He got on after that was Blackfoot. Yeah, that's correct? right. He got is signed for Blackfoot in 05 and 06. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, up there. and there's John Dowd on a 252-stroke, one of the lone 252-strokes in the 450 class uh, on that Suzuki. Actually, Cowie's Suzuki were one of the guys right there. But um, Keith Johnson, 44, the owner of um, MX338 there. Is that Marco there? In the league? Yeah, that's is Marco. Marco. That's he, on the Diablo Honda shot. right there, number it's 17. Crazy. Yeah, but, uh, I know he crashed and practiced this this weekend there, and he was. They were talking about it. Uh, uh, Travs and Costa are talking There's about how he's injured. Dowd just yeah. bouncing into the league. The junkyard. That was an ugly pass, but he makes it happen. <laughs> yeah. I always uh, enjoyed the RJ's track. It was always. Um, I wasn't a sand specialist, but this was like a a harder dirt, and it's got a little yeah. bit of silt on top. It's got kind of a Deschambault ish yes. to it, a little soft, but that clay and hard pack comes through uh, for sure. And then of course, look at this more JSR. We're going to see so much of him in the coming videos of this Arma until about that 06 time. He was so good on this yeah. bike, man. He could make it go anywhere. Uh, him and that Blackfoot Honda, man, they just gelled oh, so good together. Oh, 252 stroke especially. Um, but uh, he passed in Dubé there just before this. He's up on Dow now. But uh, Dubé must have been very uh, upset about that whole five time because – Dubé and him must have grew up close in the same age. Yeah, I don't think they're that much different. Dubé a little bit younger. He's one year older than me, and I think JSR is a few on me. So, okay. yeah, not much difference there. But, yeah, JSR just, you know, he was riding in the States when Marco was winning his uh, Canadian championships. So he never really crossed paths. And then once JSR came back, it was it was over after that. And then uh, that's just kind of the way it was. But here they are battling right there. there there's Klatt now. So he actually won the West on the 250 class. He's moved up, rides the 250. And this is when you really start to see Dusty Clatt become the icon that he is in the Canadian history. Man, on the 252 shirt, he was, he, he was, like, it was almost like watching McGrath ahead of his time. He's very bmx -y, yeah. working the bike, moving it around. This is also when the, the you know, scrubbing started to become a thing with James Stewart. But look at this, Clatt just blowing by uh, Marco Dubé right there. And, and uh, here comes Damon Huffman. Huffman. On, he was on a 450 that year, and JSR was on the 250. Hey, there's little Thomas right there. I remember that kid, little RJ worker right there. And Oh, there he goes right around there. Oh, no, actually, Huffman is on the 252 stroke. Yeah, so not quite on the, the 450 yep. yet. No. So there's JS right there. Oh, oh. Look at that pretty fella. I love seeing look at this. That. There's, that's JS's mechanic there, Andrew. Yeah, Andrew yeah. right there. Look at the shades. Those shades, they put me in a whole other bracket with <laughs> the girls. The backwards hat, I love backwards it. Backwards hat and the girls right there. <laughs> they, were, they were clawing at me for the sunglasses. <laughs> It's like going online and trying to find that perfect pair of shoes. Yep. There was my shades back then. Those are shades. There you go. And JSR taking that win there. And uh, he's back to the 250. Look at this. I love the wide shot like that, full gates like that. Who gets the shot this time? I think McGordy got it again. The two Cowies up the there. The two Cowies again. Up there. 
And yeah, it is. It's Gurk or McGordy and Dahan once again. And uh, I think I got a pretty decent start this time. I have a good motto this one here. We have some good battles with a couple guys. But me and Mesley were the uh, two strokes. Uh, only guys, I think we went 5 6 on this day, actually. So we had a pretty good day in the KTM. Well, home track rig. advantage. Yeah, the home track <laughs> advantage. I was feeling good. This place was super fun. Lots of family and friends coming out there. And uh, like, I grew up here. When I first got my license, this is where I went every Wednesday. Watch this, McGordy. Is it this one? No, sorry. It's second place then. Yeah, Dahan. Ugh! Comes up. Oh. oh, God, Dougie. Hang on to it. Check the shorts, as Travis oh. would always say. Look at that. It untucked his jersey. <laughs> yeah. Pulled his pants right Typical down. Typical right style. Looking good. Look at the, just the field just buzzing well, up that oh, hill. Somebody just fell on there on the camera on the inside. Oh, there's another crash right there. Oh, just collection. Just it's just up. a collection up there right there. The one to five class pile up there. Yeah, lots of action. But like I said, so deep. I think that actually might have been Lusk on that one. Here, oh, here's another shot. Of, look at that scrub. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, the, like, where's good. a photo from that day, man? Like, there's, can we screenshot this? <laughs> yeah, we put that on Instabanger. <laughs> make Instabanger. a reel out of it. Make a TikTok. <laughs> Uh, there's McGordy the leading again there, and then I think there's a Jim Neese. So Jim Neese's son right now is riding the Supercross series. Yes, uh, that's right. Yeah, Luke, Luke Neese. Yeah, Luke Neese. Right. So this is where Jim kind of yeah, cut his on cut his uh, feet into the pro class. Here's me and Grasic battling, and I think Grasic blows by now, me pretty McGordy simply here. McGordy wins this year, and this is uh, 04, right? McGordy yes. wins. But what happens to Grasic? Because he seems dominant here early on. I, I believe he has a bite. Watch this, Holmans. Oh, oh God, just augers down. And Don't it was hurt. funny. I remember watching this race after the fact. I'm like, serves him right. I did not like Simon Holmes. <laughs> but that crash was gross. He actually still gets up, though, and then rides the, the last 250 moto of the day oh, as well. He would. So uh, he was a beast out there. And here's Dougie. He goes down to it. Awkward. Oh, there's a lot of good crashes from Dougie over the years caught on yeah, camera. Yeah, yeah. He, he gets got back up there. tail there. Look at this. Here's oh, me in the yes. Mez Ballad now. And look, we're coming up to that section. Oh, now I get show not jumping it. Oh. Mez, Mez does it. He comes up a little short, but. Who did the editing on this? We got to get that <laughs> clip out of there. <laughs> but here's McGordy right here, stealing the win, doing a good job. And uh, McGordy hard on the clutches, had a problem in the first moto, yes, wins the right. second. And yeah, I think he went like 12 1 for still, got like fourth overall. And uh, he would, and like I said, uh, ended up winning the series in the 250 class that year. And uh, full stack of the 250, 450 guys going off. Good placement with the Skyjacks there, with yep. the camera angle going on. <laughs> but Dubé. Again. Once again, man, he was a beast out of the gate on, that on those show. 450s. There's yeah. a shot of number five. That's Evan Lofridge. And here comes our first shot of Colton Fasciotti, number 12. So great story for Fasciotti. I think it was this moto. might have been the first one. On this day, he gets up the 250 class. And again, questionable what heart and you know, what kind of shape he's in. We're not seeing the true Fasciotti yet. He pulls into the mechanics area. And says, I'm really tired. Can I get a drink of water? And he's no. running like fourth. No. The yeah. six-time champ. Yeah, six-time champ. Six-time champ. Comes in and get a drink of water. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, anyway, back then, that's what it was. And look at this. JSR already to the lead. Like, the guy was such a beast. Anytime you watch anybody that has that kind of, that little edge on everybody in Canada, whatever, you, you can't not say, well, that's what JSR used to do. You know, that's what JSR. You look yeah. at the way Cooper Webb is doing to everybody. JSR was just, he was ahead of his his time as far gone. as the competition goes. And I got to say, I remember watching motos with JSR in it, and I, I just always wanted him to get a bad start and have to fight for it because it was so entertaining. Like, Mitch Cook and Dusty Clapp battle. Yep. And the next, uh, this next year, they would be teammates, teammates. at Blackfoot. Yep. Uh, so that, and there's John Dow. Look at that. Cases it and still makes a pass. Stuff to me. They hit going down right there. Look at this. Dowd would be about oh God, early 30s, I'm guessing, at, at this time right here. So, it's, But he's just yeah. throwing that OTSFF Suzuki around right there. Look at that. Around the outside. Beautiful pass. And there it is. There's Fasciotti right there. If you get a shot there, you can kind of see his lever way up in the air. He yep. had that this sort of punk look, if you will, to the levers back then. And uh, oh, here's a this is a good crash. I remember this. Poor Kyle Keast throws it away and collects Evan Lawford, oh. and they both go down. And I think if they show it again, I don't know what you share the editing went here, but Keast comes down and picks the picks bike off him. Right? Yeah. yeah, picks the bike off off him there. Yeah. Another shot of Dowdy. Yeah, okay, here it is. It's this moto here. We don't show it. We don't get it on camera. But Fasciotti <laughs> pulls in. He's like, I'm tired. Can I get a drink of water? Later on in his career, he could stop for water breaks yeah. when he's leading that far, but not right there. Blair There's Morgan, Blair Morgan. Oh, uh, three season when he re got really hurt. This is yep. what he wore, the number 37, coming back on his own team this year. Kind of a moot year, but he comes back actually and does really good at uh, the very last round of Walton on the, on this year to kind of show that Blair Morgan is, is not gone. But there it is, JSR, the champ. So many times I've seen that hands Double raised hands, to the yep. air. Man, he's yep. good. He's solid, and that's uh, RJ 2004, and he went on to win that championship. We talked about McGordy winning that championship. Yeah. And then on the West, that's when there was East-West split. It was Clatt. So yeah. those guys uh, all dominating. But, uh, man, Armour Rewind, it gets me hyped. It gets the adrenaline going. I want to go. I want to ride. I, I want to ride. Okay? <laughs> yeah. It's like when I'm watching those old Michael Jordan Gatorade commercials. I want to be like Mike. I just want to ride. Or the Honda commercials. I want to ride. I want to ride. I feel like yeah. it. 
Can I go? Are we done? Can I get in? I want to go ride. Seriously? We can go ride now. But yeah. uh, that's up. another Arma Rewind in the books there. Brought to you by the great folks there at Arma Sports. And uh, we're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be back with more of the show. Welcome back to another social media check-in brought to you by Gas Gas this week. And uh, those guys getting those bikes dialed in brand new to the line there, the uh, KTM Husky and now Gas Gas. And we see Bam Bam uh, roughing it up down there in the uh, south in the Supercross. But uh, up here in Canada, this first one on our social media check-in, Keegan Fasciotti, the number 10 machine, looking sharp on that 50. And that is a Gas Gas machine. They got a GDR kitted out. Looks awesome. It's going to be fascinating watching him grow up into the uh, the limelight he's already in, being his dad is the six-time champ, but very cool. Another champion in his own right there. He's uh, won some Walton Championships. Dexter Seitz with the uh, the number 15. He's always kitted out in that nice Fox gear, and uh, he's ch trying to chase down more titles. I know his dad's got one at Walton. He wants to get more than him, so he's going to chase down some more this year in 2021. Walton Transcan. And then there is Devin Ray. And follow, this is a good follow here. This guy, awesome photos all the time, huge whips. So keep an eye on for Devin Ray there. And he's looking sharp there with that big, nasty whip, that one. Here is another. And being it's Gas Gas, here's another Gas Gas rider, a newly Gas Gas rider, Seth Hughes with the True North uh, Motorsports there. Those guys getting ready for the Triple Crown Series. And uh, Seth's going to make that jump from premix class up to the 250 Pro-Am. So good to see that. And he's going to look good on those uh, red machines. He's with uh, Steve Sims uh, Racing as well as uh, some other brands that those guys are kind of uh, together on. Check out those guys at the race near you. And here is another young guy and an uh, ex-pro ki uh, kid here, uh, Beckett Burke. Sorry, Beckett Burke there. He's riding that KTM and looking sharp there. That's a Tusk photo. So lots of photos coming out of Tusk there. Uh, take a, a look at them on Instagram. And I'm going to leave you with this last one. The champ from 2020, Weston Rosina. He's got his new kit there. He is looking sharp there, that number one plate. He's ready to uh, try to rain down as the champion and defend that uh, championship there from last year in the FXR premix. So that is it for the social media check-in this week. And it's uh, brought to you by the kind folks over there at Gas Gas Canada. Tune in next week to see what else we have in store. I will never stop. Would you want me to slow down? Would that make it easier for you? Or would you want the fight? The to pour your heart into it kind of fight. Or should I stop working so hard? I know you'd want me to slow down. I know it would make it easier for you. But then the gate drops. I wouldn't be anywhere else. One goal, one vision. Hey everyone, welcome back to The Garage. We're really excited about this episode. We have the bike 99%. We're doing fit and finish on this thing now. M7, have our graphics from them. Guts factory seats, we're gonna put that on. We're gonna show you how to properly install graphics. Couple tips, couple tricks with the seat and the graphics. And we're gonna get this thing looking real good. Okay, so a little recap on our YZ250. We're just about to put the graphics on this thing and the seat, and that's gonna be it. The bike's gonna be finished. But before that, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about what we did to this thing. We started off with the OEM bike, and we tore it right down, and we had a lot of good parts put on this thing. We had the suspension done by 26, and that was set up properly for outdoor motocross. We've got our wheels done, Excel, OEM hubs. We laced those up with our Dunlop tires, Works Connection kicked in a lot of hard parts for us. So we've got our launch controls, brake reservoir covers, skid plate, a lot of cool things like that. Rad braces, really good thing to have on your bike. We decked her out in the white plastic from uh, Acerbix through Parts Canada. Clark Fuel did the tank for us. We needed that white tank, had to get rid of that blue tank as much as we love that blue look. Um, 
FMF, uh, FMF works exhaust, and we did the PowerCore 2 silencer. Yamaha hooked us up with some GYTR factory parts, and these things are perfect. These things are made for these bikes. They fit perfectly, and it's gonna make our bike that much better fit and finish and performance-wise. Andrew Kelch, our guy at Lampton Dipping Coatings, painted our bars for us to look like those old school 7 8 Renthals that we talked about that we loved, and we did the inch and an eighth Renthal bars with that. He painted our coil for us too to match that pink color they did in 91 on these Yamahas, and he matched. So we did the GYTR clutch. Um, the cover, hard to explain what the color is. It's like it's like an off gray color. It's a really nice color, but that's where we went to Andrew and we had the uh, a bunch of engine parts painted to match that, along with some of our works connection parts, like our rad braces, we painted those up to match, just to give it that little bit of a feel and do a little bit extra on this thing. All right, before we get to the graphics, we're gonna get to the seat cover. Guts Factory Seats really set this thing up. It is the perfect match color. It is a quality vinyl. They did this, the stitching is gonna last a long time on this, and they, they got these ribs on here. I mean, it's not a gripper seat, we're going old school, right? So this thing's gonna be a little greasier to sit on, but these things are gonna keep us planted to this powerhouse of a bike we got here. So we're lucky enough to have brand new seat cover, brand new seat to work on. When you're doing your seat on your bike, you're gonna to wanna to inspect your foam first. You're gonna take that old cover off, and this thing might be wet, it might not be even stuck to the pan. So you're going to want to dry this out or replace it and you're going to want to epoxy it or silicone it back on some type of adhesive you want to get that back on so this thing's stuck ready for your new cover this is a quality seat cover so they're pretty easy to put on but just a couple little tips that are going to get you through it along the way you're going to want to start on the front you want to pull this thing over the front of the seat and you're gonna to wanna to pull it firm, but you're not gonna to wanna to fold the top of that seat up. You're gonna to wanna to roll your fingers around and you're gonna to wanna to get that stitching right in the groove where it's supposed to be. And you're gonna to wanna to have it centered. Then you're gonna to go to the back of the seat. Best way to do this, flip this inside out, get your thumbs in here, pull it up over the seat and roll it over the back, okay? and you'll be able to know when it's centered. You gotta just use anything as a guide. You can use, like, I'll use this guts patch, center of the seat, we can use the stitching down the side. Okay, now that we've done that, you're gonna want a little bit of a canopy, not too much. This gut seat's really nice, how it pulls around the back, but you can get some seat covers that it's just, it's just straight fabric out, and then you're gonna be, you're gonna have to gauge how much you're gonna pull that seat on, and you don't wanna flex your seat, because as soon as you put it on the bike, you're gonna have wrinkles all through your seat. So this is nice for us, a little bit of a canopy, okay? All right, so now that we've got our seat on there and we got a nice little canopy, we're gonna give it a double check. We're gonna make sure she's lined up and true and in the center, okay? And to keep it like that, we don't need to riddle this, sta this thing with staples right off the hop, so just, just a couple staples in the front. A couple staples in the rear. Okay, so we got our seat lined up. We got a couple staples in there to hold it in place. We're gonna to wanna to pull it down where the seat curves. We're gonna to wanna to give a firm pull on this and get it up over top of the foam. You'll see where the stitching, are, the stitching is in these things. You're gonna pull it around and we're just gonna do one staple here. Okay, we're gonna do the same to the other side and you wanna give an even pull. You'll see the stitching and all the alignment in the seat from the factory and we're gonna give her one more staple in there. Flip it over and have a look. I think that's looking pretty good right now. We'll be able to pull all this out, pull this around the side, and this thing is gonna look good. So you just wanna get a few staples throughout the seat just to make sure you've, you've got it on properly. It's straight and everything's going good. You're pulling it here, there's no wrinkles, okay? And then you can go through and you can put your staples all the way through it. And you're gonna to wanna to keep them relatively close. They don't need to be on top of each other, but you're gonna to wanna to put a bunch of staples in this thing because they do take some abuse. These things get moved around a lot as you're sitting on it. And uh, you wanna make sure it's not gonna fall off. Okay, so we got our seat looking good. It's straight, it's perfect. This thing it looks awesome, man. These guys build a quality seat. 
This thing went on perfect. It's probably the easiest seat I've ever put on. I'm gonna buy seats from these guys from now on. Don't be afraid when, when you go through and after you put your staples on, I always like to take these brackets off and you can get, to, instead of trying to force your stapler in there, but don't be afraid just to trim off a little bit of the excess fabric when you're done there. So you make sure your seat slides on perfectly. You don't wanna have to fight with your seat every time you gotta change an air filter, okay? So trim off the excess fabric and make sure to put your staples in. They don't be on top of each other. I don't know, leave, leave half an inch in between each staple and make sure you got everything bitten down good on there. It's tight. It's taunt, this thing looks awesome. So we're gonna set this thing to the side and we're gonna put on our graphics. All right, so we're at my favorite part of the project. We're gonna put our graphic kit on. We got this graphic kit from M7 and this thing looks perfect. Basically gave them free reign for a 91 and said design it. They threw back a kit at us and we loved it. We didn't change anything on this. Okay, so if you're a first time graphic installer, couple tricks, simple things, heat. One of these, if you don't have one, go get one. You can use a hair dryer. I like a heat gun on a low setting. You don't wanna melt the graphic, but you wanna heat this thing up so it's pliable and it bends around all those curves. Everyone knows when you get the exhaust side, your muffler side of your bike, and those side panels have those curves in them, you're gonna to wanna to be able to wrap that thing around so just like in one of our earlier episodes, we talked about keeping the things warm. So when we change our tires, my laundry room is right off my garage door. I plan my laundry around tire change day and graphic install day. So these graphics, I set them on my dryer, put a load of laundry in. These things are gonna be nice and warm and that's gonna give them that bend we need to get on our plastic properly. Some people like to take the plastic off the bike to put these on. I don't agree with that method, especially when we've got two pieces and we're gonna want everything to line up perfectly, okay? I'm gonna clean this thing up. Fingerprints, dirt, wash your bike good. Just glass cleaner. Any type of glass cleaner, anything that evaporates quickly. This is why you want clean hands, because you are touching these things. Now we've got curves here, we've got curves here. People are gonna get nervous and I'm gonna show you a little trick right now because once this thing's stuck, it's stuck, okay? Glass cleaner. Spray a little bit on the graphic and the only reason you're gonna use glass cleaner is because when you apply the heat to it, this stuff's gonna evaporate quickly. This is gonna allow us to slide this around here and once that, once we hit it with the heat, and that glass cleaner evaporates, this thing's gonna stick perfect. So I can line up everything exactly like I want. Just follow the lines of the lines of the body panel. Okay? It's that little squeegee we talked about. I'm gonna put a little bit of buffer on there. I don't wanna scratch these graphics out. And as I squeegee this down, I'm gonna push out that Windex. Glass cleaner, I'm using Windex here, but any type of glass cleaner will work fine. Okay. So now we've got basically a platform for that. We're gonna hit it with some low heat. Just finished up the graphics on our YZ250. Super excited how this bike turned out. Last thing to do is put this seat on here, but I'd like to thank everybody involved in this project. And we're gonna give you a sneak peek of this, but you're gonna wanna stay tuned to next episode Inside X to see the real deal. Rude's Garage, signing off.
Welcome back to Inside X. Special guest for you today, the Honda GDR, youngest rider there. He started his pro career, his pre-pro career, because he was still an intermediate last year, and uh, now starting his rookie season, Ryder McNabb. Ryder, <laughs> glad you can join us. Oh yeah, for sure. It's an awesome opportunity. Yep. So anyways, you're back in Ontario. You're riding at Gopher Dunes. But I, I don't want to go at where we are right now because we've, we've seen your results lately. We're going to get to those in a minute. But I want to go back to where it started. You're from Manitoba, um, and you live on a farm. you got your own track. Obviously, we've been there twice for the Pro Nationals. Very cool facility. How did it get started for you? Um, it was pretty much my dad. My dad uh, used to ride before he got into his car accident uh, like 16 years ago. And ever since I was three years old, I've been riding in I think it was pretty much him getting me into it. Yeah, so your dad had that accident, uh, was end up being paralyzed, and then, you know, having you kids around, you've had to grow grow up pretty quick because, you know, when I was out there for those nationals and, and we were putting on these races, man, you're digging in, you're helping out, you're watering the track, you're tilling the track, you're on the dozer. The farm life is pretty real for you. Yeah, for sure. Like, um, ever since I was three, I pretty much had to help out um, – like when I was five, working on my 50, like he was there, but I was doing all the work because he is in a wheelchair, has no hand function. I've been, so I've been pretty much doing everything. Yeah. And that's, uh, that goes from farming to actually doing your own bike maintenance. I, I was going through your Instagram and, and I know personally I've seen you do it is, uh, doing motor jobs and rebuilding your bike since you were like on fifties, which is, uh, I, I gotta say it's a huge help for when you get to this level in pro because you get to understand the bike better. Yeah, for sure. It's, uh, it's helped me out a bunch doing, helping me figure out what's wrong with it, what I need to change to make it better. And just for me to go faster, pretty much. You, uh, it must be a mechanic's dream. Who's your mechanic this year? Um, I'm actually not sure yet. Okay. Uh, maybe Noof. Oh, Ryan Again? Lockhart. Yeah, yeah. We just had uh, him on the, well, not him on the show, but we've seen glimpses of him, uh, pushing his bike across the finish line there in mission. So what a guy, uh, a legend, but, uh, yeah, you mechanics dream being able to know your motorcycle that well, but, uh, growing up in Manitoba and I got to say, after you know doing this triple crown and going to a bunch of tracks in Manitoba and just kind of scouting things out, you guys have unreal tracks. What what's a rider from Manitoba did you look up to when you were young? Um, I don't know. There's a like when I was really little, like a, a Ryan Miller or somebody like that. There's yep. a there's a couple guys that go pretty good, but. Yeah, Miller was a uh, smooth, a tall guy. Yeah, he was very he, tall. He was really smooth when I was little. Yeah, I remember Ryan Miller uh, back when he was uh, on 80s, and he looked like he uh, he was going to college. He was so tall on his 85. But uh, when it came to mud, and I think Manitoba people ride mud well, he could he could kill it. So, um, so Manitoba, you grew up there, but uh, you didn't do too much racing there. You kind of jumped borders. You went to the states and started racing down there in the amateur nationals. Um, yeah, I've for. Eight, like all little bikes pretty much I did in the U.S., um, like Loretta's, Minio's, and uh, stuff like that. But I did, uh, I did uh, two years, I think, in Manitoba for the – there was like a Cowie contingency thing nice. that I did yep. for two years. So yep. that was good. Back then you were just getting off the Cowie 65s, 85s in that, that realm. Yep. But going down to the States, and we, we talked before the show, you won, you end up winning three amateur nationals there as a young kid, um, mini O's and uh, the Spring Creek, which is the uh, uh, Spring Nationals down there. So, yep. man, that, that's huge for a Canadian to go down there. And we know the competition, like the Ryder D from Chesco's, the Nick Romano's, those guys you're battling with. Yeah, for sure. I uh, at Minios, I did uh, or I beat uh, Rider D, and it was actually the Supercross nice. one. And then at uh, the Spring Creek one, it was I uh, beat uh, Nick Romano. Nice. And those guys both having huge rides down there in the states. Yep. You being their Canadian counterpart, you actually good friends with uh, like Jet. Was it uh, Jet Reynolds and and Rider D yep. himself? Yeah. I uh, I'm really good friends with Rider D and Jet. I stayed at uh, Rider D's house for like. Uh, two winners down in California. That's got to be amazing. And uh, man, that, that group there, it's a, it's a Bakerfield that where they live. It's like a, 
a lot of fast kids come out of there. Yeah, for sure. They're all like they're all super fast, especially on those Cali tracks that are just fast and wide open. <laughs> yeah, no, it's um, I've been out there a few times helping my brother out, and those tracks are a little different than uh, a lot of nationals tracks. It's just pin it to win it. A lot of stopwatch uh, nationals going on out there. Oh, for sure. Even I'm sure in the super mini divisions when you were there. Um, now switching gears a little bit, you did race super minis for the KTM squad. Um, you were teammates with, uh, like Cole Thompson, um, uh, Captain Benoit, uh, Tanner Ward, and then you made that switch to Honda. What was, what was the, the switch there? Is it just a opportunity or a, a better team? Um, it wasn't like, we were just trying to find something different just to get me going a little bit. And, uh, we weren't really sure what uh we wanted to do if we wanted to go 125 or 250 if we were going to go 125 we would have stayed ktm but we decided to go 250 race in canada and just be so if i do want to race in the states again just be that step ahead doing the 30 minute motos yeah. and just riding with the top top guys in canada yeah now that's uh that's a good choice there um and so ktm was kind of just like hey we want to keep you a more of an amateur rider and uh, honda was like hey we'd love for you to test your your water here in the uh, the pro class yeah actually um at first i think honda was thinking that i would go like the 150 and then i went there and i hopped on the 250 like my dad was like no we're gonna if we're coming honda we're gonna do 250 yeah, and that's a uh, that's a good choice. I I feel like those those one fifties they're great machines, but they're not they're not the quality of a super mini that uh, you're gonna go out there and you're gonna no, they're high. not. They're really heavy. They're not as fast as a uh, a like a one twelve KTM, but unless you have it done up like Carson Mumford's. Yeah, that's uh yeah Carson Mumford went on to that Geico ride there. So yeah, a little bit different scenario, you know, here in Canada we just don't have those uh, kind of connections, but uh going into your um uh actually before we get to the the rookie season, your pre-rookie season we'll call it. Uh you've had uh some good finishes at Loretta's, but not overall. You've had some like podiums. Yep. Um <clears throat> and motos, but not in the overalls. Is it just it's such a tough transition for you going down there with the heat or, or the competition? Um, it's not even really that. Like uh, 20, I think it was 2018 or 2019, I did Loretta's. And it was the first three motos, I got a flat front tire. Then I got my bike uh, locked up on the second lap. And then I uh, crashed through the Ten Commandments. Oh, yeah, that's a tough go. Those things are, are nasty too when they get rutted yeah. or if it's muddy. But uh, I also seen on your Instagram, you must have been suffering from some uh, like lung problem or something. It was actually my ribs got inflamed or something. And it's like, it, like I can't even, I couldn't even walk uh, just a couple feet without like breathing really heavy. It was like my uh, ribs were like inflamed or something. Yeah, so you um, had that issue and, and just it seems like an issue every year causing and that's it's so tough just like walton you've got to put those three motos together and uh you know it, it, at that level everybody's going so fast there's so much money involved for those kids training to those kids bikes um and it, it's very tough being a canadian going down there and doing well um but going back up to walton you have nine titles now and i think before the show i'm like you got nine titles you didn't even know that no i th i thought i had less than that well, there we go. We got nine titles. So he's he's possibly going to chase down the record here because you could ride. Maybe we got to look at the rule books, but schoolboy youth class this year, yep. and uh, get a couple wins there for sure. Yeah. So exciting times there for Ryder McNabb and being so young. So let's go into your pre rookie year. We call it pre rookie because you're not quite a rookie. You're still intermediate rider. You're still amateur rider. But here in Canada, it's a pro am class, so you're able to cut your teeth and get kind of like a no pressure season under your belt. But man. You know, guys that have done it in the past, I feel like you might have been the top guy to do it as an intermediate. Um, yeah, for sure. It was uh, it was a little nerve wracking getting going from an eighty five to a two fifty and racing with guys that are twenty and I'm fifteen, fourteen, yeah. and it was just like it was crazy. Yeah, and to rate off, rate off the first start, you go down. I think your bike was a little twisted, and I see Noof on the side of the track. He's fixing it up. My, uh, my pipes actually fell off. Okay, the pipes fell off. Yeah. So kind of sometimes that, 
you know, is a good moto because you're not getting that start. You're not having those nerves. You can kind of just go out there. Well, I've already messed up this moto. Let's get the feel of this, this pro racing, you know, from behind dealing with a twisted bike and, and then the nerves just go away and you kind of like, you know, break the seal on the pro racing. Yeah, it was, uh, kind of that start kind of messed me up for the, for the whole year. Like after that start, I was just kind of like super timid going into the first turn and I would kind of, if I wasn't like in front of them, I'd kind of back down a little bit. But um, I had to ride with uh, bent bars, and my we actually did a pit stop. <laughs> we changed we changed the pipe, and it was actually a really good moto. Like I was in, I think I caught up to twelve. Yeah, with and the pit stop. With, and then. With the pit stop, I was like 18th or oh, okay. something. So you got up to 12, had to take that pit stop like yep. F1, get uh, get some new tires. Yep. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. Yeah. And now now just talking about one of your kind of teammates, but one of your managers now, uh, Colton Fasciati, and uh, doing these Armour Rewinds, we get to see kind of where he started from. And he started at the young age of 14 racing pro. I don't know if it was a pro-am class back then. I think it was just straight pro, but he went pro. And I feel like, I don't know if you give him the gears around the, the GDR uh, shop, but I feel like you had a better uh, rookie kind of first time at it at being 14. Yeah, I don't know. I, uh, I've never actually really, I never watched him uh, when he first started. So you I haven't. born yet. Yeah, pretty <laughs> much. <laughs> I haven't uh, got to, see, I didn't see his rookie year and uh, how well he did. So yep. Yeah, it's crazy to think like he just retired. Uh, in 2019, it was 18 seasons, and you're, you were only 14 years starting. So he was four years deep when you were born. So, yeah, definitely didn't see it. But, uh, you know, I'm sure there's, uh, like, digs or those guys would get you up to base on what uh, he did and what a career he had. Yeah. And uh, just knowing the stats that he had, he didn't get winning championships for quite a – like, he was 02 he started. 08 was his first championship on a big bike. Yeah. And I'm sure you want to jumpstart that and try to get it done earlier. Yeah, for sure. Next couple of years. And just a, a little tidbit of information, Inside X, we're pretty solid for championships around here. We just had Colt Nichols on. He won the East Coast Supercross. And then uh, last year, we had Dylan Wright, Marshall Welton. Uh, who else won titles? Uh, we had those two guys on. They won titles. So, uh, yep. oh, Jess Pettis, we had him on. So we get a little Inside X bump. Maybe, uh, you know, maybe not a title, but maybe a Rookie of the Year this year. Or yeah, maybe for, both. for sure. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to try. Yeah, so Rookie of the Year this year, looking for that. Um, but uh, just going through, you know, your team, your home team, kind of uh, say, you've got a good following behind you from Manitoba. I know talking to your buddy uh, Corral, he's been kind of like your mechanic at a lot of these races. Since your dad um, being in a wheelchair can't make it to the line, so yep. talk about how influential and, and big part of the team he is. Um, yeah, for sure. He he's actually a school teacher. Um, he came to Loretta's two or three times with yep. me. Um, he's just super cool guy, just loves to ha hang out and help out. It's been awesome. Yeah, he's uh, just a great uh, guy to have around, and usually you only get him during the summer because he's, he's obviously teaching classes and uh, stuff like that, but um, what a good fit for your program, as well as uh, your family, like uh, your grandpa Clark. He's a, a busy guy, but when we were at the, the track there, he was so willing to help, and it must be awesome to have such a good family support. Yeah, for sure. It's uh, He... He helps out whenever I need it, and even now that my brothers want to ride, he's trying to get them going with a new bike and stuff, nice. so it's awesome. And now is the whole family out uh, East Coast here right now in yep. Ontario? Yeah, everybody's out here. So living the motorhome life. Oh, yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's tight, but we make it work. Yeah, big family, motorhome, living on the road. You guys do well, and uh, it must, not, must be nice to have, like, uh, like Gopher Dunes uh, facility that you can get out of the motorhome. You can go in the shop and, and chit-chat with the guys. Yeah, for sure. Like, uh, uh, Derek's kids, the, they kind of just roam around with my brothers. I get to go in the shop pretty much all day and just kind of hang out. Yeah, no, that's, uh, that's great. Now, jumping to that it was your first pro season, it was your first time under – um, a rig and having teammates like Tanner Ward and Dylan Wright, what kind of role do they play into this? I see sometimes Dylan would jump off his bike if he's before you or after you and like talk to you about some lines. They must be very helpful. Yeah, for sure. I've been, I just take whatever I can from them and just Dylan will help come off the track, tell me about some lines and just help me out with whatever I need really. Yeah. And, uh, in the rig is everybody up and like getting their gear changed in the same area. You kind of chit chat yep. and is it, is it uh, serious or is it pretty jokes? Um, it's, it's kind of both like 
before the moto, it's pretty serious, but like leading up to it, it's it's all fun. Yeah, it's good times. It seems like a good crew over there. Uh, you obviously have Ryan Lockhart, uh, Derek Schuster, Colt Fasciati, guys that have been around the sport forever. So you've got a good uh, you know background as far as family, as team. Everything's looking good. Um, man, we're kind of out of time here, but uh, really appreciate you coming down here, coming on the show. And like I said, that Inside X bump, we're going to get that. We're going to get that Rookie of the Year, maybe even a title. I can for feel sure. it. I can feel it in my bones. But uh, thank you for tuning in. That's Ryder McNabb, the GDR Honda Rookie this season. And uh, stay tuned for more Inside X.